Over 20 years ago, I was in New York City covering the Night of the Champions Professional Bodybuilding Contest, and one of the competitors who was uh, actually one of the leading uh, competitors to win that night couldn't compete. He couldn't return to the night show. Uh, he was in great shape. Uh, I spoke to him and I, I found out why he had to drop out of the contest. And this was never revealed to the public, but the truth of the matter is this competitor had to drop out because he had a raging case of constipation so bad that he could, he could barely walk. It's not funny. I'm not laughing. And uh, he, he couldn't pose. He had to drop out. And, uh, you know, why did he get constipation? Well, it had nothing to do with using steroids or growth hormone or anything like that. He got that because of his diet. His diet lacked dietary fiber. Uh, I found that in, over the years, from what I've observed, from looking at various bodybuilders' diets and, and hearing them discuss their diets and reading about their diets, I, I believe that fiber is the most underrated and ignored aspect of bodybuilding and athletic diets. Every athlete that I've ever worked with, from boxers, martial artists, basketball players, champion bodybuilders, all of them had one thing in common. With few exceptions, their diets were completely lacking in sufficient fiber. This is going to create problems, not only with digestion, but general health, and I'll explain why in, uh, in a minute. But what is fiber? Fiber basically is indigestible carbohydrate. It's, for example, the, the walls of plant, you know, hemocellulose, cellulose. These are various forms of fiber which can't be broken down by human digestive enzymes. So what happens is they pass through the gastrointestinal tract and they wind up in the colon. Once they're in the colon, they're acted upon by a resonant intestinal bacteria. Uh, there's, you know, there's trillions of them. There's more intestinal bacteria uh, in the colon than there are cells in your body. And uh, in the last couple of years, this intestinal bacteria, which is collectively known as the microbiome, has attracted an enormous amount of medical attention because the effects of having a healthy microbiome are extremely wide ranging. The research is still in its infancy, but they think it can affect everything in your body from head to toe. I'll give you one example. 99% of your immune response is, is, is related to a communication between your intestinal bacteria and your immune system. What this means in practical terms is if, you're, if you have dysbiosis, that's the medical term for having an unfavorable balance of intestinal bacteria, your immune reactions are going to go down. They're not going to be strong, which sets you up from everything from having greater chance of colds and flu to a higher rate of cancer. Now, what does all this have to do with fiber? Well, as I said, fiber is indigestible by human digestive enzymes, but it, it can be broken down by intestinal bacteria, and it's the primary food, put this in capital letters, and dietary bacteria is the primary food that feeds intestinal bacteria. So if you want to keep your intestinal bacteria healthy, you've got to eat a large amount of fiber. Uh, increased dietary fiber studies have shown it's, it's related to lower systemic inflammation. Among the other effects of systemic inflammation is muscle loss, especially with age. Uh, uh, there's a disease uh, or a condition called sarcopenia, which literally translates into loss of lean mass with age. Um, and uh, one of the underlying causes of sarcopenia is a systemic inflammation which sends out these, uh, basically features an increased release of what they call inflammatory cytokines, which are products of the immune system. Unfortunately, they tend to cause catabolic effects in muscle, which leads to muscle loss gradually through the years, starting at age 40. And dietary fiber helps to block the release of these inflammatory cytokines, and thereby it lowers systemic inflammation. Uh, increased dietary fiber is also closely associated with decreased cardiovascular risk. Uh, the, the, one particular form of fiber known as soluble fibers can actually lower blood cholesterol by locking on to the cholesterol uh, that, that you eat from food and, and, and promoting its excretion out of the body before it can kind of get, get in your blood. Uh, I'll, get to, I'll talk about that more in a minute. Uh, 
because of, of the way dietary fiber helps to modulate and control the release of insulin, it will also help prevent di type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is increasing at an epidemic rate throughout the world right now. A lot of this increase in type 2 diabetes is due to physical inactivity and poor diets that are high in refined sugar and saturated fat, along with a lack of sufficient exercise. However, dietary fiber in, in, in sufficient amounts helps control the release of insulin and therefore t takes a strain off the pancre pancreas. And, and by doing so, it can, pancreas is where insulin is produced uh, in the beta cells. But by doing so, it can prevent the onset of type 2 or help prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes. I'm not saying that fiber alone will prevent uh, type 2 diabetes, but if you use it along with exercise and a proper diet, and I think the best diet to prevent di diabetes is a lower carbohydrate diet. If you do all of those, even, with, even if you have the genetics for diabetes, uh, you will not get diabetes. I myself have extremely strong genetics for diabetes. Both sides of my family, my, both my grandfathers had diabetes. My father died from the complication of diabetes. I myself, if I eat a large amount of carbohydrates, when I check my blood glucose, my resting blood glucose, it actually comes up to almost diabetic levels. So I basically, it's almost like I have an allergy to refined carbohydrates. Uh, if it wasn't for the exercise and the, my, my control of carbohydrates, I right now at my age would be a type 2 diabetic, but I'm not because I control it through diet and exercise. And I also make sure I include a, a large amount of fiber. I'll tell you what I do towards the end of the, uh, this video, but let's talk a little bit more about fiber. Um, it also will decrease uh, fi a high fiber intake will also help prevent obesity, not only through helping to control insulin, but also by increasing what they call satiety, which involves a lower appetite. Uh, protein does the same thing, but fiber works in a different manner. Dietary fiber, uh, well, I'll talk about it more later, but it has to do with, these sh with the short chain fatty acids that are produced by intestinal bacteria through their uh, actions on fermentable fiber. The short chain fatty acids stimulate gut hormones, which greatly lower appetite. Uh, and that's one reason why dietary fiber can help prevent immunity, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, obesity. Fiber is also associated with increased gastrointestinal health. As I said, the fiber feeds the microbiome. That's the collective term for the intestinal bacteria, the microbiome. Fiber is their food. Very important to know. Fiber is their food. Fiber, uh, you know, as I said, the, the uh, now what's the uh, what's the requirement for fiber? Well, let me put it this way: How did fiber? Let, let's start. Let's go back a little bit. How did how did this notion that fiber is good for you get started? It gets started by a, 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 a anthropologist, I believe. His name was Dennis Burkett. He went to Africa to study the indigenous populations there, and he, and he, he kind of like noted what they ate. And uh, these people had a complete lack of gastrointestinal illnesses that were common in the West. For example, colon cancer. Colon cancer was just didn't happen to these African people. They had no colon cancer. And Burkett traced, the, he believed that their lack of colon cancer was caused by their gigantic intake of fiber. Uh, these, these indigenous African people averaged 100 grams of fiber a day. 100 grams. Now consider that the average American eats 12 to 15 grams. Now when you eat a lot of fiber, you speed food out of your body and you prevent uh, byproducts of food metabolism from irritating the colon, the colon's uh, intestinal cells, which can cause mutations and eventual colon cancer. And one of the three short chain fatty acids produced by fermentable fiber acting, uh, 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 I mean, I'm sorry, bacteria acting on fermentable fiber, they produce short chain fatty acids. One of them is called butyrate. Butyrate has the capacity to not only prevent colon cancer, but it can actually revert precancerous colon cells back to normal. So, and that's a tremendous effect, tremendous. Bottom line, if you don't, you know, colon cancer, I believe, is the second greatest cause of cancer death among men. Uh, I think I think the first one is lung cancer. I believe the second or third one is colon cancer. If you want to prevent colon cancer, you, you do two things. First, you eat a lot of fiber. 
And the second, if you're over age 50, have regular colonoscopy tests, colonoscopy tests, uh, especially if you have any close relatives that have had colon cancer, you want to have these tests every five years, colonoscopy. I'm probably mispronouncing that, but what the hell? <laughs> anyway, what's the diet, uh, the dietary requirement for, uh, suggested for fiber is 38 grams a day for men, 25 grams a day for women. As I said, most people only ingest about 12 to 16 grams of fiber. Um, you know, and fiber basically is, in the, like I say, it's indigestible carbohydrates. Um, and, uh, you know, I talked about the, the production of short chain fatty acids. The bottom line is your best sources of fiber are whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. Now, this, now, you, now you can see the connection of why athletes and bodybuilders tend to have low fiber intake because those foods are also high in carbohydrate. The fact that fiber is indigestible seems to be irre irrelevant to a lot of bodybuilders who just see the grams of carbohydrate in these foods and assume that the uh, high carbohydrate content or even moderate carbohydrate content is going to maintain body fat, make it harder to lose body fat. But if you're not eating these foods, whole grains, uh, uh, like I say, fruits and vegetables, although there's one source of uh, soluble fiber, uh, which is oatmeal, which is actually a favorite of bodybuilders, a favorite breakfast food is oatmeal, which contains uh, uh, soluble, uh, uh, soluble fiber. And speaking of soluble fiber, there's two basic kinds of fiber. Uh, one of them is insoluble fiber that's found in wheat bran, nuts, and green vegetables. And the other is soluble fiber, which I said, which, as I said, is found in oats, peas, beans, apples, citrus fruits, carrots, and barley. Other types of fiber are the fermentable fiber. This means that they are again acted upon by intestinal bacteria, and when they are uh, when they're acted upon, they produce these short chain fatty acids, which are very very important for health. The short chain fatty acids have, are, have about they're, they're called short chain because they they're chains of only six to eight molecules. Medium chain triglycerides are 8 to 10, and long chain are 20 and up, like, for example, fish oil. The short chain fatty acids, uh, fermentable carbohydrates that produce short chain fatty acids include pectins, such as found in apples, beta-glucan, beta which is found in oats, guar gum, which is found in beans, and resistant starch. Uh, resistant starch would be something like green bananas, which what that means is that the carbohydrate or the starch in the bananas cannot be uh, really readily broken down by your digestive enzymes, but it can be broken down by your intestinal bacteria and, and actually acts as a food for your intestinal bacteria. Uh, you can actually turn common carbohydrates into resistant starch, such as rice and pasta, by cooking them in, co in coconut oil or, or something like that. And then instead of eating it right away, you store it in your refrigerator overnight. And what happens is the starch in the uh, pasta or the rice crystallizes and becomes resistant starch. And what this means is that it, has, it, it provides 50% less carbohydrate content. So you, you could turn a uh, high carbohydrate food like rice or pasta into a moderate carbohydrate food that contains more resistant starch just by cooking it and then putting it in your refrigerator and letting it cool for about maybe 12 hours or so. You know, that's a little trick that you might want to try if you're worrying about the carbohydrate content of this food. Now, soluble fiber attracts water, uh, uh, you know, and uh, it kind of like, it's like a sponge. It, it, it expands when it, when it co comes in contact with water. Insoluble fiber, such as wheat bran and uh, the fiber in certain vegetables, it provides bulk to the stools and it prevents co uh, constipation and it provides a filling effect uh, when you uh, eat it after a meal, uh, so, so you won't eat as much food. Soluble fiber can slow the digestion of rapidly absorbed carbohydrates. And this will prevent, this will produce less insulin release and thereby help prevent body fat accretion, normally associated with high glycemic or rapidly absorbed carbohydrates. So that's another trick for you. Let's say you're eating a highly refined carbohydrate source, you know, uh, that's uh, mostly carbohydrate, doesn't have fat. Uh, let's say something that's high in sugar. Now, normally when you'd eat this, you'd have a tremendous rapid insulin effect. However, if you if you ingest some soluble fiber with it, uh, for example, uh, you could take psyllium powder or you could take guar gum or something like that. If you do that, 
you will actually, uh, it, it, the fiber will lock on to the uh, sugars and it'll slow their, their absorption. And because of the slow absorption of the sugar, you're going to get, you're going to get far less, uh, far less secretion of insulin, which means less body fat accretion. And, uh, it's, a, and also, you know, you, you just won't get as fat. That's the bottom line. Uh, soluble fiber can also, as I said, trap cholesterol and bile acids in the gut and decrease their absorption. So if you, let's say you eat, uh, let's say, let's say oatmeal, you have a breakfast that has oatmeal and you have eggs. Okay, the eggs contain 300 milligrams of, of cholesterol per egg. If you have the oatmeal and you have the eggs, the, the uh, soluble fiber in the oatmeal will lock onto a, a lot of the cholesterol in the eggs and cause it to p literally pass right through you. You won't even absorb it. So that's still another trick of, related to soluble fiber. Uh, and as I said, the, so the, uh, the short chain fatty acids that are produced by fermentable fiber actually travel to the liver where they prevent the, the production of cholesterol in the liver. In this respect, it's very similar to these drugs called statins, which are widely prescribed to lower cholesterol. You can say in a way that soluble fiber are natural and safe forms of statins. Now, what are probiotics? Prebiotics. Prebiotics are fiber foods that form, ferment in the colon. They are not digestible, but they stimulate the growth and pro proliferation of beneficial bacteria in the colon. Now, so uh, as I said, the prebiotic uh, foods are basically high in fiber. Though you know, uh, sauerkraut, uh, kombucha, uh, kombucha tea is also uh, all these things are fermentable foods that are considered prebiotics. Of course, probiotics are different. Probiotics are actual bacteria available in supplement form, and they, if you take them on a regular basis, they can help to or thought to be, help to repopulate your uh, intestinal uh, bacteria population uh, and, and, and change uh, the, uh, the, let's say, ratios of intestinal bacteria in favor of the good bacteria over the bad. You should know that some studies indicate that having one type of bacteria in greater abundance than other favors lower body fat levels, less absorption of carbohydrate and fat. What I'm talking about is bacteriorites. Uh, bacteriorites, uh, if you have more bacteriorites than firmicutes, I know that sounds funny, but that's what it's called. If you have that particular ratio, you'll absorb less carbohydrate and you also tend to have less body fat. And you can adjust this by taking, uh, eating prebiotic foods and probiotic supplements. Now, does, uh, does, uh, eat the, now, speaking of body fat, does consuming dietary fiber help to control body fat? Well, there was a four-year study of human adults that found that those who ingested more than 15 grams of fiber daily showed greater rates of body fat loss and 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 low and, and uh, greater rates of waste reduction. Waste reduction, in other words, the waste got smaller compared to those who consume less fiber. Other studies have confirmed that fat loss. Other studies have confirmed the fat loss promoting effects of fiber. However, much of this depends on the ratio of intestinal bacteria, as I said before. Having a ratio that favors one form of bacteria, for example, Provotella bacteria over bacteriorides tends to favor greater fat loss. You can alter this ratio by consuming more uh, prebiotic foods. Again, as I said earlier, a high fiber diet also tends to make you feel fuller after a meal. And this is why it's hard for uh, vegans to gain weight because the vegan foods, fruits and vegetables are, are rich in fiber. They provide a full, a fulling effect, a full effect and you know you just lose your appetite. You feel full. You don't want to eat, so they wind up eating less calorie. And, and remember, vegan foods, fruits and vegetables, have less calories. They're less calor calorically dense to begin with. They, they contain mostly water and fiber, so you know they don't provide a lot of calories. But even if you're not a vegan, consuming more fiber will provide more satiety, which means lower appetite. And then that means eating less food. Fiber, fiber itself sends satiety signals to the appetite center in the brain, which turns off the appetite. That's another way that fiber helps you lose body fat. The short chain fatty acids produced by fiber activate various satiety gut hormones, adding to the fat loss effect. Now, you know, uh, by the way, the three short chain fatty acids specifically are but butyrate, propionic acid, and acetate, there's three of them. The lack of fiber, uh, one problem with ketogenic diets, a ketogenic diet, is a diet that contains 20 grams of carbohydrates a day or less. The main problem with such diets is a lack of dietary fiber. 
Now, you know, consider that 99% of your immune response is dependent on a communication between your intestinal bacteria and your immune cells. Now, if you're not, uh, if you stay on a long-term ketogenic diet, you're going to have a, uh, a definite loss of intestinal bacteria due to the lack of dietary fiber, and it's going to adversely affect your health. For this reason, uh, I, the way I look at ketogenic diets is they're great for kick-starting body fat loss, but I don't think anyone should stay on them a ketogenic diet more than uh, four to maybe six weeks maximum. Then you can go to a low carbohydrate diet where you start to consume more fruits and vegetables, thereby getting more fiber, thereby feeding your intestinal microbiome. Uh, ketogenic diets are definitely not recommended year round because they have a very, very bad adverse effect on the intestinal microbiome. You know, there's much more to the dietary fiber story than I can talk about in this video, but I will cover it in detail in a future issue of Applied Metabolics. The uh, health effects and the body, uh, body, body fat loss effects of, of uh, dietary fiber are much more far-ranging than anybody could possibly imagine. And my, my article on dietary fiber is going to surprise a lot of people. There's things that you couldn't imagine about diet, just how important it is. I just wanted to cover the highlights in this video. And speaking of um, my Applied Metabolics newsletter, if you want more information, in-depth, evidence-based information on nutrition, supplements, fat loss techniques that work, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, exercise science. Subscribe today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. No better source of information anywhere on the internet. Nothing can match it. No blog, no internet site, no magazine, nothing. I incorporate my 55 years of constant study and experience into the newsletter. No matter what your level of intelligence or expertise, you will learn something from reading my Applied Metabolics newsletter every month. Again, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Uh, dogs are fantastic. They're the, the greatest companions uh, in the 15,000 or, th or 30,000, depending on which source you believe relationship of man and dog. Dogs have become closely bonded to humans. And take it from me, dogs really are man or woman's best friend. They're the most loyal creatures on earth. So, you know, make yourself happy. Go to a local shelter, save a dog. You won't regret it. Take care.